Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Modern Psytrance, style heavily dependent on randomization, whether it's affecting synth parameters or sequences. But randomization has this downside of adding unwanted chaos and unpredictability to the track, especially when used a lot. And thus, we need a way to control this randomness, like having a repetitive yet random pattern, you know, if that makes sense. And here comes the subject of this tutorial, which is Bitwig's native arpeggiator, aka my new favorite arpeggiator slash sequencer. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about this arpeggiator, why I use it, and what's the workflow I built around it. But before we dive into this tutorial, if you'd like to learn all about making modern killer sidetrans basslines, my baseline crash course is on my Gumroad, go check it out, alongside with my other preset packs. And if you're new to the channel and you like this content, please consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment. I post content like this once a week and special content for my Patreons, so check that out too. Now, with that said, let's dive into this tutorial. So. What I'm going to do in here, I'll add an instrument track, and yeah, by the way, I bought the software last summer, and I've been using it more and more recently, and I'm in love with it. And no, I'm not at all sponsored by Bitwig, or paid, or whatever by Bitwig. I paid this software with my own money, and I'm in love with it right now. So, anyways, we have an instrument track in here, let's load serum so what i'm going to do i'll just design a really simple patch and we will build the whole tutorial you know around it so the patch is pretty simple we're going with a straightforward fm sound so for this i'll choose a wavetable called basic mini i'll take this off like so i'm going to copy the saw to oscillator b like so I'll turn it on, I'll turn off oscillator B, and now I'll just FM oscillator A from oscillator B. So now we have this. Pretty nice. We can actually separate them with an octave if you'd like, but I think this is too harsh. I'll take down the randomization like so. I, I think this sounds pretty nice for the demonstration. So now, what I'm going to do, I'll load the arpeggiator and I'll quickly create a really simple pattern here so we're in the key of G sharp so I'll just create a G sharp note in here like so one long legato note now we have this okay we have this gatling arp thing so what I love about this ARP is that we have this like global gate length in here with which I can control yeah, the global length. So as you can hear in here, the notes are hard to distinct, you know, in this like gatling sequence. So what what I can do is I can take the gate the global gate length to 90% and now we'll start hearing the notes separated from each other, like distinct notes, if that makes sense. See, like, we hear this kind of, like, gap between the notes. So that's nice. Now, as a classic 8-step sequencer, I'm going to leave it to 8-step, by the way, just for the sake of the demonstration. We can create a pattern, like a groove, you know? So I'll do something maybe like so. Should sound something interesting. Pretty nice. Now, it's a looping... You know, it's going to loop forever with these eight steps. Now, here where this arpeggiator becomes pretty interesting is that we can add randomization to certain steps. So adding randomization to certain steps, meaning that we will have a repeating, you know, steps and the others will be randomized, you know, so we'll have a repeating feeling yet randomized, if that makes sense. So let me just show you how it sounds, you'll get my idea. So. We have the modulators in here. I'm going to click on them and I'm going to add a random LFO thing in here or a random generator. So I'll set this random generator in here to 1 and 16th note as for the speed. 
and I'm going to keep the trigger on sync, okay? And now what I'm going to do, I'll take this fourth step in here and I'll randomize it like so. And maybe I'll randomize this seventh step in here and maybe, yeah, this third step. And let's see what we already have. Pretty nice, now we have this like repeating pattern, but it's still, it has like this random touch to it. And this is basically what we're looking for, you know? So I'm going to push this a step further and maybe you know, take randomization of this one, turn it down, maybe, you know, I'll randomize this step instead of the third one, I'll randomize the fifth one. Now we have this. pretty nice. So now what I'm going to do, I'll push the patch a step further and I'm going to add a really simple modulation on the filter. So first off, I'll choose a bandpass 12 decibel per octave filter. This is my new favorite type of filters. So now we have this. Pretty nice. So what I'm going to do, I'll modulate the filter with the velocity. Like so. So as you can see, with the sequencer, I can add different velocity values to each step, just like with the gate. And exactly like we've done with the gate, I'm going to write a pattern and I'll just randomize some of the steps. Maybe let's just do something like this. And now we have this. Same thing, we have this repeating feeling to it and we're going to add randomization to the different steps. It's like so, so we'll keep on the repeating feeling, but we'll have, you know, random modulation. So now we have this. Pretty nice. And for sure, we can add another random modulator to modulate the velocity separately from the gate. But yeah, I kept only one just to keep things simple for the tutorial. And now what I'm going to do in here, I'll just take a complex shape for the LFO. And actually this complex shape is going to be the famous SSQ shape. If you don't know how to make it, all what you have to do is load your favorite wavetable on here, you know, in one of the oscillators. And then you can ask the LFO to have this, to copy this shape as an LFO shape, you know, by clicking wavetable A to LFO or B to LFO. Yeah. I've already talked about that in another tutorial, so you can check that out. You know, I'll leave a link in here or in the description. So now we have this SSQ wave shape in here, and I'll make it modulate the LFO just to add more movement, and I'll make it modulate really slow, like 16th. Now we have this. Pretty nice. Now, I'm going to add more groove to the sound by playing with the probability of whether the sequencer is going to play some of these steps or not, you know. So, for example, I'm going to play with the probability whether it's going to play step 4 and maybe step 7. So how I'm going to do that, I'll, we need like some sort of an on-off button. What's better to use in this case than a square LFO, you know, it's on-off. So it has only two values. So I'm going to add an LFO in here, classic LFO, and I'll set it to square. And now, I'll set it to unipolar, just like so, and I'll ask it to affect the probability of, yeah, you know what, step three, and maybe step six. And now we have, and now I'll just set it maybe a little bit faster, like so. So now, when I'll play the sequence, we'll start having like this kind of groove of steps being played and steps being, you know, turned off. If that makes sense. So now we have this. Okay, maybe a little bit slower. See, sometimes it's playing them, sometimes it's not playing them. Maybe we can make it yeah, modulate also the probability of the last step too. And what I'm going to do, I'll set the rate to slow and I'll modulate the rate of this LFO with the random modulator in here. 
to add like even you know let's say more randomness to it but you know still having some repetitive feeling like i hope that makes sense like we're randomizing the randomizer and somehow so yeah maybe i'm just modulating way too fast now we have this So this is pretty nice. Now I'm using like some sort of a, like I'm using a random pattern to do it, but you can just maybe set it to maybe a dotted clock, you know, set it one and two dotted clock. And now you'll get like a repeating pattern in somehow, you know, I, I hope that makes sense. So if I'll play it, it sounds like this. So, you know, these steps will play <clears throat> once and they won't play the next time and you can add all sort of crazy things you know in this case but i'm going to leave it like on hertz like i did it you know with this random because yeah, i want it to be a little bit random and another thing we can do with this arpeggiator to add like even more groove uh and control that groove too is that we can make this square allophone here control the rate of the sequencer making it jump between 1 16th and 1 and 8th or 1 16 and 1 and 32 or whatever division you want us to control because basically we can control these all of these parameters basically all of the arpeggiator with the modulators and this is just awesome because think of all of the crazy stuff and crazy modulation you can create with this you know it's it has like this modular feeling to, the, to it, and this is really nice. So now, if I'll play the sequence, we have this. Now, I'm modulating the rate way too much. So this is really nice, and now I'll just add a delay in here. Set it to one on eighth, dotted, you know, classic stuff, ping pong. Maybe a phaser that we will modulate with the internal LFO and the velocity, just like so. Set the internal LFO to yeah, maybe four bars, like so. And with the kick and bass, we have this. Okay, I think I went a bit too far modulating the rate in here. I'll just set it to one and two dotted. It should be really, it should like have a repeating feeling to it. Pretty, pretty nice. I hope you see the potential of the craziness, of the repeating yet random craziness we can create with such an arpeggiator slash sequencer because, yeah, it's like limitless and this is really nice. You have control over everything and yet you can randomize it and like get crazy with it. So, yeah. One last advantage about this arpeggiator is with keeping external hardware in sync. So if you use external hardware, you might have encountered this problem with arpeggiator VSTs not being on time, you know, and like uh, acting like a drunk man, if that makes sense. And this is due to a problem with the VST protocol and the MIDI protocol. There's something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not geek enough to understand what's going on exactly, so I won't talk about stuff that I don't understand. But here's the issue. When you try to clock, or when you try to drive a hardware instrument with a VST like Rhythmizer, for example, or even autoplay in the VST format, you will have an issue with the MIDI being drunk and you know not having the notes on time. Let me demonstrate that. Here we have a patch on the Microfreak from my upcoming Microfreak preset pack. And here we have Rhythmizer. So Rhythmizer is going to 
send random one and sixteenth, you know, not so complicated. One and sixteenth random gate pattern with random velocity values to the microfreak, and we have this. Okay, pretty nice. So what I'm going to do, I'll record, I'll bounce this sequence out so you can see the issue of what's going on. So let's bounce it out like so. Okay, so here we have this MIDI pattern that we've just bounced. Uh, here we have this like audio clip that we've just bounced out. So what I'm going to do first is sync everything correctly. Okay, so now basically everything should be in time. But here's the problem with the MIDI. Look at all of these nodes, how they're offset from where they should be, you know, like you might tell me, yeah, but I didn't sync it correctly, but it is basically synced correctly, okay? See, this one is off. This one is off. This one is off. This one is nudged. Nothing is on time. Okay, this is close to being on time. This one too, but still, they are not on time. And this is a huge issue, you know? So, with you know, with these VSTs and the solution for this problem is using the native arpeggiator because it just keep things tight and in time. Well, almost, you'll see. I'll just copy this arp in here. I'll paste it on this, you know, for, uh, on the microfreak channel and I'll take rhythmizer off. Okay, maybe I'll just take off the randomization on you know the note probability and the rate so we'll have you know just gathering one and sixteenth note pattern sequence and now if i'll bounce it out okay bounce it out let's Give it some gain, just so we can see what's going on. Let's sync the first note to be in time. And now check this out. The other notes are almost 100% correctly on time and doesn't need, well, they need the slight corrections in some places but not as the one created by rhythmizer you know and again i'm not dissing rhythmizer because it's a lifesaver it's it's an awesome vst you know but it just when when working with hardware devices and sending you know notes over midi you will get this weirdness you see okay first note which is almost right on time you know and this is a huge issue that is solved by using such arpeggiator and uh, yeah, uh, with this, this we've reached the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. And uh, yeah, see you next time.